Sometimes New Zealanders feel a bit isolated. Clinging to the bottom of the world, the last civilization before Antarctica. But distance hasn't kept Kiwis insulated from world events, especially war. Photographer Grant Gerondale and I have been traveling the back roads of New Zealand. Near Wanaka, we found Hurricane Tim and a collection that speaks of Kiwi courage. He can often be found soaring above the snowy peaks of the Southern Alps in a plane that has no business being in this place, in this time. A World War II British Spitfire that has escaped the rusty clutches of decay and neglect because Tim Wallace thinks it important, the right thing to do. At a dusty little airport, Wallace has amassed a collection that speaks of daring do, of terror and destruction of heart-pumping, adrenaline-rushing dogfights, of bullets and blood and battle. The planes that saved the world from tyrants half a century ago. The planes that flew home in victory, in formation, over a young boy growing up in New Zealand. When you see a group of Mustangs doing that as a schoolboy, you certainly don't ever forget it. Yeah, we're putting a back seat and Tim Wallace never did. A self-made millionaire, Wallace scouts the globe for piston-engine planes in need of repair. They're brought back to the airport to be made new and to be flown again, but most importantly, to be shown off, to let the world know of New Zealand's contributions to freedom. We've got all these stories. Uh, they're all true. They're all recorded. In the New Zealand Fighter Pilot Museum, Wallace is open next to the runway. There's Peter Spertel's propeller, shot off by a Nazi Messerschmitt. There was cannons, tracer cannons going through, and it put a dirty big hole in his... Uh, and he's propeller bait. There's Jim McCaw in a dogfight over the English Channel. And as a tour guide today, a walking reference book to the first-hand pain of war. There were feelings in those days of uh, terror, was it? <laughs> Whatever you like to call it, and tension, you know, stress. You, you can't produce those feelings again. You couldn't do it. But Tim Wallace hopes to try, especially with children. We hope that the children find it, you know, interesting and learn learning why, why these aeroplanes were built with guns. Tim hopes they'll leave here with some idea of what it was like when the world was at war and their grandfather so far from home. And uh, he got right in behind him and he started shooting. A lot of them don't believe, but, but, but why did they do that? It's all the histories in there. The people are still alive that can talk about it, too. And the faces of those who can't line the walls, too. Per capita, New Zealand sent more men to this century's wars than any of the Allies, and buried more than any other as well. All the RAF squadrons had New Zealanders in them. We had our own four or five squadrons. Uh, they were just through it. They were everywhere. And in the sky above this dusty little airport, you can sense them still. Men who were young once, and the planes that pummeled evil. So the world doesn't forget the Kiwis' contributions. So New Zealanders can always know of bravery and courage. Now, tomorrow night at 10, come along with me and ride the rails of Barry Brickles Railroad. He built it to serve his pottery business. He's dedicated it to preserving New Zealand's forests. Meet him tomorrow night at 10. And uh, Hurricane Tim now is finding most of his planes in the former Soviet Union, preserved under big frozen lakes that preserve that metal and it doesn't rust, and he's finding them nearly intact. That's a he's great adventure. Mm. He travels the globe looking for these. Very interesting. I'm real curious, the New Zealanders, were they very receptive to Americans carrying big television cameras? Were they? Oh, they loved it. Friendliest people, I think, other than Oklahomans, really? yes. that I've ever met. Just, just wonderful. Just always wanting to help us. Good. Mm -hmm.